over people. And that God is the healer. You come right over here. Are you going to be able to make it? Okay. <laughs> Norm, you might have to hold her up. Everybody want to come up? Those that want to pray for her? In faith, believing? You know... Just lay your hands on the person ahead of you. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you for your power, for your Holy Spirit, Father, that lives within us. Father, you gave us that precious gift, which brings anointing into our lives. So, Father, we rebuke the enemy where he comes in to try to confuse Father. Father, we speak the mind of Christ over these two ladies. That we have the mind of Christ. Father, help our unbelief. And Father, we rebuke the enemy. We speak to these kidneys and this pancreas, Father. We speak life, the breath of life over her father and father the enemies tried to destroy you tried to destroy her father because she's a great minister father she hears from your word and she hears your voice so father we rebuke the enemy from her life we cover her with the blood of jesus and father we speak life to her organs in jesus name in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up Katina to you. Father, you made her. You knew her when she was in her mother's womb. You knitted her together. And Father, it's by your stripes. And Peter says, it's by your wounds that we are healed. So Father, we speak healing to that knee in Jesus' name. That, Father, that warmth would come over her. Penetrate that knee, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, that you would touch her and bring healing. We rebuke the enemy, Father. He so many times have tried to rob from this family. No more. No more. Father, we speak life. We speak wholeness. And Father, even over the family, the home, their jobs. Father, we speak life to all of them in that household, Father. But Shelby, Father, you called her. And Father, you're going to do a mighty work in her. And even with Jenna, Father. You knew them while they was in their mother's womb. And Father, you had a purpose set up ahead for them to do. And even with Katina and Dan both, Father. Mighty warriors, we speak over you today. And Father, that you would just bless them beyond measure. Now, Father, we pray for Glenna and Rex, Father. I know they're together. I know that, Father, they're agreeing together. And Father, we're agreeing with them that total healing will flood her body. Father, we rebuke those tumors. Father, we rebuke that cancer. And Father, we speak life with your breath, Father. The Spirit's breath over her. Father, protect her. Heal her. Encourage both of them and the whole family, Father. And Father, we stand here united, agreeing together that she might be healed. And Father, that you will touch her with your Holy Spirit. 
and flood her, Father, with your healing power. And Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And when you're believing for healing, you've got you to confess that. Even when it don't feel like it. You've got to believe God. You've got to believe His Word. And we have to understand that we have to speak the Word of God over ourselves in our situations. So many times we speak death and cursings over our situation. And sometimes you can watch it. It just happens. Because we spoke it so much. How did, how did, how did the, how was this world created? By words. The Spirit. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 3. You know, there's sometimes you just read over a scripture over and over again and, and you think, I know what that says. Chapter 3 of Matthew. And this is talking about Jesus. He come to John the Baptist to be baptized because he had to. It was a part of what God told him to do. And he was being obedient. Have you been obedient in water baptism? We believe with the heart and we confess it with our mouth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when we do that, that saves us. And then the enemy comes in and tries to mess with you. You're not saved. Look what you did yesterday. Well, he's a liar. Tell him to go get saved. He won't do it. Because he's got too much pride in him. But here Jesus was coming, and it talks about it even in, in Luke, but ch verse 11 of chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 11, I baptize you with water for the repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The windrow fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn, and gathering up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And you know, and let's go on. Verse 13, And then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. What would you do in that situation if Jesus would have come to you and says, I need baptized? That would have been some deal, wouldn't it? But you see, Jesus wanted to be obedient. Jesus wanted to do what the Father said. He had to be the example. Even in water baptism. And Jesus replied, Let it be so. Now, it is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness, then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, the heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, who I love. With him, I am well pleased. You know, that's what all of us want us here. Well, daughters too. But that's what we all want to hear. And even the Holy Spirit come down on him like a dove. 
He was water baptized, but yet the Spirit come down on him. And in Luke, it says, then he went and started healing people and he started doing things. Even Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I think, why? Why would he need that? And you know, the Bible tells us to desire the gifts, especially the gifts that build up. The gifts that are in us, only by that same Spirit that fell on Jesus. Why would he need it? I asked myself over that as I was reading over this. Why would he need it? Is there something we need to pray about? Guys? Huh? They're praying? Okay. But they're taking care of it, right? No? Huh? Who is it? Richard. Okay. Is he right out here? Guys, put your hands up this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Richard. We ask, Father, that you would touch him and strengthen his body. Father, that you would be with him. And Father, that whatever's going on in his body, Father, we ask that you would touch him in a mighty way and strengthen his physical body. Father, heal him. Heal him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're welcome. Okay. God is good. All the time. Father, touch him. Where did I stop? <laughs> he was with me. <coughs> Verse 16. So as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, the heaven opened up and he saw, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning. What do you think of when you think of lightning? Power. Power that comes from only the Spirit of God. That's how the world was created. That's how things happen in our lives. In chapter 3 of Luke, if you'll turn there, Verse 15. The people were waiting expectantly. Are you waiting expectantly for God to do something in your life? Are you even believing that He can do something in your life? and wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. And John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but the one more powerful than I comes the thongs of the, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. There it is twice. And you see, that's the thing. Sometimes we think there's only one baptism, but there's not. There's power that comes from the Holy Spirit. Jesus received it. He went through water baptism. He received it. And then the Spirit of God come down upon him. And it said like a dove and with lightning. That's power. Power. And, and do you have any power? Now, I've told you, sometimes I can't control the gifts of the Spirit in my life. I can ask about them, 
And, and sometimes if I, if I seek them in a service, then God starts moving. The Spirit starts moving in us. And that's why I tell you when we pray and we pray silently, you need to pray that God would use you in a word, in something that would make the difference in somebody's life. And you see, that's what God wants us to do. He had to go, the Bible says, so that the Spirit could come. And you know what? And if each of us have the Spirit of God in us, is not that even better than what Jesus had? Because there's more of us. And what did he say in John 14? The things I do, you will do. And even greater things. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. But God puts us in place with people's lives. And that spirit is to make us come to the realization that we have power. And I give you all the examples in my own life. And if we got time today, I, wanna, I want some of you. What a, a thing that you know was totally God. And you didn't have anything to do with it. That made a difference in your life or somebody else's life. And that's what we're talking about. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it just always isn't speaking in tongues. We've seen that prophesying is greater than speaking in tongues. But if you're praying in the Spirit where you don't have understanding, your mind doesn't understand, you're praying to God. And we found out last week when we're praying to God, we're praying in the Spirit. We are praying God's exact will. How many of you want that? God's will for your life. You know, I'm getting up there. I ain't dead yet, but I'm getting up there. And you want to think, what have I accomplished spiritually here on this earth, because that's the only thing that's going to matter. Who you spiritually helped. Somebody that you took under your wing. How many people do you have under your wing that you're discipling? Because the Bible says, go make disciples. I have two right now. And it's because they need Jesus. <laughs> because their lives are shambles. And are you willing to sacrifice? But you know what? It's a whole lot easier when you've got the Spirit of God in you that knows what's going on in people's lives so that when you go up to them and God speaks to your heart about that person, it's going to make them pay attention if you know something that only they know. And that's, they're going to say, where did you get that? And they're going to want what you got. Do people want what you got? See, they followed Jesus because they wanted. They wanted to see him do miracles. They wanted to see them things. But the thing that, after I read this, I thought in both in Luke and and in Matthew, I thought, wow, the Spirit of God even came on Jesus. I thought He was the Spirit. He is the Word. Why would it tell us that if we didn't need it? That power. And it's not anything spooky. It's just you being able to communicate back and forth with God and the Spirit of God is revealing things to you even about your own self. You know, that's the one we don't want to hear the Spirit from, is when God is using His Holy Spirit to convict us of sin, and we turn Him off. And He's got something that He wants to change in your life. And I'm telling you, you will come up against that same wall over and over again until you get to victory. And see, we need the Spirit of God even 
to disciple somebody, even to lead somebody to Christ. We need that fire. It's just not about water baptism. It's about being baptized with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, with power. And he told his disciples, don't you leave Jerusalem until you receive it. And they didn't. And after they, Peter received it, he won 3,000 people to the Lord. Even after he told them, you're the one that killed Jesus. You killed him. You crucified him. And they said, what shall we do? And you know something? Sometimes the same Spirit, if you're not listening to the Spirit that's speaking to you every day, you kind of get sharp with somebody or your wife or your husband. And my wife always said, are you yelling at me or to me? Really, I didn't know the difference. I was yelling at her. But it wasn't about anything she done. It was just frustration in me. Anybody else ever done that? And you know how the Holy Spirit quickens you? Now you can avoid that, and your marriage is going to go clear downhill. And it's because you didn't listen to the Spirit that was speaking to you. The Bible even says you have no need of man to teach you because you've got the Spirit in you. But you've got to have the Spirit in you and you've got to realize when He's speaking directly to you. And I really believe if we start listening to Him, then He starts telling us more because He can trust it with us. There's some people He can only trust a little with. There's some people He can trust big things. And so it's a matter of how we listen to the Spirit of God even in ourselves. So even, even here, it says the same thing. Verse 16, And John answered them, I baptize you with water, but, but one more powerful than I will come. The thongs of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Same thing. Same thing that went on. I want you to go to Acts chapter 8. Now in chapter 2 or 3, we talked about that it's for your children and their children and those that are far off. This baptism is for them. And some churches don't believe that that is for today. And that's fine. But there's probably no power. Okay? And I've demonstrated to you what God has done through me in some of the things. And even some of the people here last week demonstrated and give testimony about what they've seen God do. The pastor that didn't believe in it. And... He told, he told the lady God was going to heal her teeth because she had really bad teeth. And the pastor didn't believe in it, the, the healing and everything behind him. So she told the guy that was talking to her, said, turn around and let the guy behind you watch your teeth be healed. Guess what happened? It happened. Changed his life. Changed his thinking. And because we're never taught, we don't know. Why did Jesus need the Holy Spirit when he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And he went around and he'd done miracles. In Acts chapter 8, verse 13. Verse 12. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus, they were baptized, both men and women. 
Simon himself believed and was baptized. And he followed Philip wherever, for everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. And when the apostle in Jerusalem heard that the Samaritan, Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to tell them. And when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon them. They had simply been baptized into the name of our Lord Jesus. And when Peter and John placed their hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. Now in the day of Pentecost, they didn't, they didn't have to lay hands on them. It just happened. The wind went through and boom. And that can happen in your life. Or somebody can lay hands on you and it happens. To receive the Holy Spirit. They'd been baptized in water. So see, they're saying now they need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So there's more than one baptism. And I've been wanting to tell you that for years, but I didn't want to blow you out of the water. And God said, the time's time. It's now. You know why? Because things are speeding up. I'm telling you. Things are getting worse and worse and speeding up. All you got to do is watch the news. If you want depression, go watch the news. Amen? Amen. Don't watch the news. <laughs> Verse 18, And when Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the hands, apostles', the apostles hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone whom I lay my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, you remember chapter 13? How are we supposed to use the gifts of the Spirit? In what? In love. Not to say you're more spiritual than anybody else. You do that and you're going to have problems. And if you've got that attitude, you're going to... Because God can shut it off. God knows our hearts. Even giving, if you're not giving in faith, you're just throwing your money away. Well, no, you're not because we're using it. We'll use it in faith. But you may not receive something. It's faith that pleases God no matter what you do at your job. But you know what? Simon didn't want it for love. He wanted to prosper. He was already a sorcerer. And the Bible says he got saved. He believed and was baptized. Water baptism. And he had not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So he knew there was a difference. And you know, we can go through our life not knowing that we can have power. But you know what? Your heart has to be right. And I told you from the beginning, I knew there was more. But I just didn't know what it was. So I asked God. And, and I, didn't, I didn't speak in tongues. No, God was giving me words of wisdom and the, the word of knowledge about people going through certain things. That's how it started with me. Just speaking in tongues isn't, it's a sign of it and that's how they recognized it and we'll see how they recognize it again but it doesn't have to be just that but it is powerful when you're praying in your prayer language okay and I don't argue with people that don't agree with me it doesn't matter to me I know what God's doing and that used to make me so mad because I would talk to people that believed there was, and at that time I believed he couldn't. It passed away with the apostles. And then all of a sudden, God starts doing some things in my life. And I, how is this happening? And that's the bottom line. But yet, when I come here, I didn't push it on anybody. 
If someone would come up and ask me, you know what they would say to me? You've been in my bedroom. Because when you preach, you're preaching right at me. God can work that too. That's prophesying. Preaching is prophesying. And you can prophesy about things to come. And I've done that. Remember the two boys? Happened. Two years exactly. Just under two years. And I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God. And he tells us to desire the gifts that build us up. And so I didn't have any problem about not telling you about tongues. Because I could prophesy, I could preach, and nobody knew the difference. They just thought I had a mic on them when they went home. I told you about the two ladies that come here from up by Jackson. And I said the same exact words, that the woman that come with the woman that invited her, it was hearsay, but she said, I said the same exact words, there's somebody here that doesn't feel that they are worthy to even step inside a church. And that woman come up after the service and was crying and said, I said them the same exact words. I didn't know. I just listened to a thought that went into my head. And you know what? Sin starts with the thought. Think about it. What's the Bible say about that? If you let it nest in your hair, you're going to have problems. And you see, that's the whole thing, but you can use God's way or you can do your own thing. But everything, a sin starts with a thought. What does James say? First chapter of James talks about that. It's your own evil desires that drag you off and entice you. And the Spirit of God will not do that. He's a gentleman. If you don't want it, don't worry about it. Just be happy. What was that saying? Don't worry. Be happy. Okay? I'm not going to argue with you. There's just sometimes you know that you know that you know, and you don't care. Okay? Now Simon wanted it. And Peter said in verse 20, Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought... You could buy the gift of God with money. You what? You thought. Sometimes we've got stinking thinking. And everything starts with a thought, good or bad. And it's which one you entertain that makes the difference in our lives. You have no part, verse 21, to share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. You're not using this in love. Any of the gifts. I don't care which gift God wants, He gives you. And what did we learn back in Corinthians chapter 12? God gives the gifts to those that He wants to give the gifts to. You can desire the gifts. It says eagerly desire them. And if you're going to do it, desire the ones that build up the church. I expect you all to go home and read chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. Read it right through. And see, that's the difference that it's going to make in your life. Even how you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit right now, if God's speaking to your heart about something you need to take care of today. And you know what we want to do? I'll do it tomorrow, God. Anybody ever done that? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that's going to make a difference. You can wait too long on God and nothing will happen. Okay? Verse 22, repent from this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. 
For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. He saw right through him. And you know what? Bitterness will ruin your life. You'll be mad at everybody else and don't know why. Because they didn't do it your way. This isn't, which one does that? Have it your way. Burger King. I got to eat there when my wife's not along. She gets sick if she eats Burger King. I don't know if it's a stuff they put on the meat or what. That was for free. <clears throat> Turn to Acts chapter 10. Okay, this is Conor Cornelius calls for Peter. You know, Peter was up on the thing and he was having a vision and he fell asleep and, and he had this vision of this sheet coming down with all the unclean animals coming and, and he said, God, I would never do that. And God told him, what I call clean, don't you call unclean. And we think it was all about the food. Well, it kind of was, but it's not. The bottom line was, God was about to take him to the Gentiles. <laughs> and they wasn't even supposed to meet with the Gentiles. And they get there, and something miraculous happens even unto the Gentiles. And they was just standing there, minding their own business. Have you ever done that? Minding your own business, and all of a sudden God says, I want you to go talk to this person. God, do I really need to, God? Does anybody argue with God? Do I really need to do that? Can't somebody else do it? And then you, we wonder why we don't see God move in our lives. It's because we won't even listen to him when he's speaking directly to us. And you want all the gifts, but you don't want to be obedient. Beating, obedience has to come first. Be willing and obedient. That's the only two things you've got to be is willing and obedient to do what God tells you to do. Okay, we're going to speed this up, so we need to go to verse 34, chapter 10 of Acts, verse 34. Then Peter began to teach. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him. And... Do what is right. You know the message God sent to his, the people of Israel telling good news, the good news of, <clears throat> of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning with the, Gent the Galilean after the baptism that Paul preached about. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Hello? That blew me away. And it still does. God had to anoint Jesus with the Holy Spirit. That's how he could do what he did. Does that blow anybody else away? God did it. The anointing come from Him, even on Jesus, and power. And when He went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with Him. Is God with you? Does God put people in your life to make a difference? Do you always seem to stumble on those people? Are you wondering why? Because God wants to use you with those people. There's a pattern. Pay attention to the pattern so you don't miss God. 
and even in your own self, your, your walk with Christ and working out your own salvation. There's a pattern, and until you get set free from certain things in your life, whether it's bitterness or whatever it might be, jealousy, whatever it might be, you are going to struggle. And one day you're going to wake up and it's going to be, <coughs> where'd it go? God took care of it because of his mercy. Sometimes we got to search and search and search and seek and seek and seek. And then we'll find. You know, Elizabeth and Mary, their pregnancy, other people that we look at, that all they wanted all their life was a child. And then at, and at a point in time, God gave them what? A child. Don't give up on what you want. You may be old when you get it. How many of you want a baby at 90 years old? Not me. But what if God gives it? Everything that comes from God is good. Amen? Verse 44. And while Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as, the, as we have, as they did in Pentecost. It just happened. And they received it. And Peter's astounded because now God's given it to the Gentile. Why? Because he wants all people to have it. Amen? Amen. And there again, he differentiates... Blah, blah, blah. The difference between water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And these was even Gentiles. And Peter and the guys that went along with him shouldn't have even been in the house of the Gentiles. But God had them go. He had Peter have that dream. You see, God works everything out that it's going to happen to you at just the right time. And he has got a schedule. Keep asking. Whatever it is. If there's a gift you want, keep asking. But make sure your heart is not like Simon. And when you're using, you're not manipulating people. You're telling them God's truth. And only they would know. And we think, well, do we just got to live here by and by until Jesus comes back? No. He baptized us with fire and the Holy Spirit. If you want it, you ask for it. You can even have somebody that has it lay hands on you. Now, I had it happen, nothing happened. But then it happened again. And I was on the floor for a half hour and I couldn't even get up. We had a guy in here that was into Wicca, his family. He was coming here to church. And one Sunday, a bunch of the guys come up and prayed and he'd come up. And I went and I prayed over him and he was down on his face. And we got all done and I told the guys, put him in the chair over there. <laughs> he was sitting by where Kevin was. I said, put him back in the pew. And he come that Sunday night, imagine that. He goes, you know something? I was in Wicca and I didn't see that kind of power. He said, I could not move. I could not get up. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> you got one live one. Do it, Lord. <laughs> 
You know, and that went on, and I don't even know if the people here knew what was going on. We just sat him back in the pew. And... But I'm telling you, it's real. And when I come down to it, the only thing I said, God, I want everything you have for me. And I don't want anything that's not from you. Okay? That's the bottom line. Now, I took you through this to show you that there's a difference in water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you have any questions, please come to me or somebody that you know, because it's hard to explain everything. I get home and think, I should have said this, I should have said that. You ever do that when you're witness to somebody? I got to look around here a minute. Ron, are you here? There's this guy. And I told you about this. He just, when I got around that guy, he just tormented me. He seen me in the restaurant this week and he said, I've heard about you. I said, oh really? I'm coming to your church. And he was the one that I said I didn't want to be around. He was one of that personality that no matter what, it just irritated you. Have you ever been around somebody like that? Besides your spouse? Or kid? <laughs> and I about tipped over. I walked in the restaurant and he yelled at me from across the restaurant. Hey! I heard about you. I said, oh, really? Yeah. Then he come up to me afterwards. And I found out that he's relation to Candy Davis. Watch what you say. You never know who's related to who. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Ouch. So I want you to think about the person that aggravates you. Are you willing to take the gospel to that person? Are you willing to help them? God tests our hearts, don't he? And sometimes we don't even know he's doing it. All I can say, take what I've told you. If you don't understand it or don't know about it, then don't worry about it. I would rather be that I didn't know everybody's problems. So when I come in here and God spoke to my heart, I could tell you truthfully without knowing that I already knew what it was what going through. And that's how you see the spirit move. Amen. Anybody got anything you want to share before we close? Uh, I was afraid of that. Oh. I didn't know what the Lord was going to do, but 
what he's done. So I have his family, and I am now working with them. And uh, just the father and I, I, look, I'll, I keep constantly saying, are you really my son? Because he thinks a lot like me. And I'm working on him, and I'm working on his family. Uh, and there's benefit on both sides, but we can see even in that family. This is what God has helped get me to do. And I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. I heard him say from his own mouth, I'll never do this again. I heard that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what I would never do? Take a family in. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 can't say never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Now, I want you to go home and I want you to read over chapter 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians. And it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And if you wrote down the scriptures today, check me out. I know a lot of evangelical people don't believe. They believe it passed away with the apostles. But my thing is, why did it say on the day of Pentecost? For your children, their children, and for those that are far off. It didn't say it died when the apostles died. Okay? You check it out, let me know. I can't find that anywhere in the scriptures. I can take you to scriptures that they use to say it's dead. And that's in chapter 13. But they say there's no more gifts of the Spirit, but there, is there still knowledge? Yes, there is. Don't you learn more about Jesus every time you have relationship with him? I hope you do. I will pray with you. I will lay hands on you. Or you can just go out and make sure it's God. I had a lady from this church come into the church and God told me, you go tell her right away. And I did. And I said, God wants me to tell you right away, this is what I believe in. And she says, I'm going to prove you wrong. I said, go for it. She went out on her lunch hour one time. Guess what happened? She received it. And she come back and said, Pastor, we have to talk. I told her, I'm not going to convince you. You read it in the Word of God. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to make sure you get it from the Spirit of God. And if you don't desire it, don't mess with it. But when you mess with it and you ask, you desire, you ask with your whole heart. And it may not be tongues. God may be just start telling you things about things that are happening in the world. And there's some things that I don't tell that I've seen. Because God has said, don't do that. And you're thinking, is it about me? I ain't telling. See, that's the wrong heart. The bottom line is, God is real. He's alive. He's not dead. Jesus is not in the grave. He sent his spirit to us. Go read John, the Apostle John, the book, chapter 14. You'll do even greater things. How many of you want to see greater things? How could you outdo Jesus? And some people say, oh, that's just leading people to Christ. Well, that could be part of it, because a lot of times that is a miracle. Because we're so full of bitter and hardness. The world has put it on us. And don't you forget this. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's going to do all he can do in your marriage, in your family. And he's going to do that. But the rest of that in John 10.10 10 says, But I have come to give you life that you might enjoy life. That you might have it. 
to the abundance. Running over, shaking together. Pressed down, running over, shaking together. I told you I prayed one time. God, I want to preach in that church one time to know that you're God. And you don't know if I'm lying or not. I'm not lying. I sat right out there in my semi on the corner and said that. And I've been here 20 years. Sorry for you. And what can God do with you? Don't you underestimate yourself. Because I struggle reading. I struggle with a lot of things. But you know what? God still chose to use me. Don't you think that you've sinned so far that God won't use you? That is a lie from hell. We got to wake up, church. Because the time is drawing nigh. She loves you, sister. <laughs> And a lot of times you're already working in the gift that God's given you. He's given you a personality for that very thing. And God will change your personality. God will do things in you. But people, you've got to believe He can. It's no different than being saved. Okay? Now, if you have any questions, call me, see me, whatever. And I'll try to answer them. If not, I'll send you to Bill. Bill's got all the answers. Right, Bill? Oh. <laughs> but people, we need this. For the days that we're going through, we need this. And I'm just telling you. And it's up to you. I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink. And, and pastors get frustrated with that, that you lead them and then they don't, no, nah, I don't want that, you know. I just, um, and it just isn't that, it's other things. But I'm just telling you, it's real. And I hope the demonstration of the power of God works through you, that the Spirit of God just falls all over you. I couldn't even drive home that night. I was in Angola when this happened. My wife had to drive. And you know, I can't explain that. Even coming here and preaching today, I will be totally wiped out tomorrow. I don't understand that. People get around me and say, are you all right? And it's like, I'm having a spiritual hangover. You know, I can't explain it. But when the anointing is on you, it's totally different than when it's not on you. And God wants to give it to you. Amen? No? Oh. <laughs> You're holding them overtime. I've been told that. And I struggled with that for a long, 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 long time. And when I came to know Jesus, I just had a really simple heart. And still, still pretty simple mind. But I was in Adrian, I was in Adrian at the bookstore one day, and I said to the woman, This has been years ago, and this is when God started. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 